Hey everybody, it's Aiden here once again as it's time to put on the smooth jazz, get a smoky haze going through the room, and drink from the Tim Hortons coffee cup of chat in another episode of my opinions and analysis series, Pressing Issues. Yes, I'm finally back from Canada, eh? Now unlike my other Real World Racing Series story time where I tell it exactly how it happened, this is where I go no filter and offer my opinions on the happenings of Formula 1 and anything else going on. I might even drop into the world of sim racing as there's stuff going on there to talk about, but that's for another time. So after two weeks away from all of this, it's time to look at what's been happening over the summer break and delve into the bullshit surrounding F1 Silly Season 2019. And I say bullshit, because the stuff that comes out usually is. Because these media outlets tend to just write anything for the sake of clicks. So what I thought I'd do is talk about the teams, the drivers that are involved, where they might go, look at the rumours, and sort of bring everything into as much of a neat little package as I can. So kicking things off, I'll start with Formula 1's Perma Champions Mercedes, since they're the top team and where quite a bit of the speculation is knocking about at the minute. So Hamilton is contracted until the end of 2020, and given that he's on for title number 6, there's no need for him to go. The question surrounds who will be driving the second car. At the start of the season, it looked like Bottas 2.0 had put 2018 behind him, but it looks like it was all flash in the pan stuff. He's not done anything beyond the first three or four races of the season, and has gone back to being inconsistent. Esteban Ocon is waiting patiently in the garage, and I bet he, more than anyone, was nursing a semi when Bottas spun off at Hockenheim a few weeks ago. But will Mercedes go for a driver that's been sat in the simulator for the season, or will they want someone that's done some actual racing recently? Toto has said he wants to let Bottas down gently if he goes. The decision, according to the F1 website, is soon. So that's going to be one to look out for. Now where will Bottas go if he's released? I guess the only place he can go is back to Williams. Has there ever been an occasion where a guy from the top team has gone straight to the back? Answers on a postcard please. Now it's a tough one to call really, you know, Bottas or Ocon. It's a bit like asking which contagious disease you'd rather have. There is no good outcome. That's not a good analogy, is it? Moving on, Red Bull. Now this one's been sort of screwed up a little bit as I woke up in a hotel room in Alberta to see that Gasly had indeed been dropped for the remainder of the season, even though Red Bull said his seat was safe for 2019. Now I'm not surprised at all. To quote Peep Show, Hitler promised never to invade Czechoslovakia. You can't trust people, Jeremy. They've promoted Albon, of all people, to assess him. It just so happens that Red Bull is part Thai. Now, they were never going to give Kvyat his seat back, were they? But the question is, do they keep Albon for 2020, or will they shock us all by promoting the Torpedo back to the main team? I don't think it would be so bad if they were just honest for once, but at the same time, if you didn't see this coming, you might want to watch them a little bit closer. So while I'm on the subject of Red Bulls, Toro Rosso. Now from where I'm sitting, it's going to be Gasly and someone else. Whether it's Kvyat or Albon, we'll have to see. And since Dan Tictum has well and truly shagged his racing career, the claims of Kvyat is just keeping Dan Tictum's seat warm are all moot. Going on to Force India or whatever the hell they're called these days, since one of the drivers' father is the head of the consortium that owns the team and the other has got a shitload of Mexican sponsors, that partnership isn't going away anytime soon. But Haas is an interesting one. Team boss Gunther Steiner has hinted that either Grosjean or Magnussen won't survive the end of the year. And since there is the possibility of an open seat, Esteban Ocon is linked to it. Shocker. People are still interested in driving here because they see as a team we are not weak, Steiner told the F1 website. No, it's just your two drivers and your title sponsor, isn't it? Now there are some mutterings that Nico Hülkenberg could have one of the open seats, but as Steiner has said, 
It's all talking the talk, and no one is walking. Just talking. Alfa Romeo next, and Kimi is already contracted until the end of next year. The big question surrounds Giovinazzi, or G of a Nazi if you turn on the auto subtitles. Has he done enough to stay on for next year? And there is one name being thrown around the internet for a potential replacement. Not Ocon. Although, naturally, yeah, Ocon is linked with the vacant seat. But I'll give you a clue. It starts with an M and ends in Ick Schumacher. Fact of the matter is, as it stands, Mick will not have enough super license points come the end of the year as his 2016 tally will be written off. Besides, let the kid carve out his own career instead of heaping expectation and nostalgia on him because of his name and who his dad is. Or who his dad was. I mean, we have no idea. I mean, fair play to the family keeping that covered up for six years. But who else can have the seat if Antonio goes? Aside from Ocon, obviously. Nick de Vries could come in off the back of Max Mania, but he's not a Ferrari driver, and none of the other drivers are anywhere near ready. So as it stands, it could be that Giovinazzi stays. He's an Italian, in an Italian team. The results might not be there, but as a marketing opportunity... However, at Renault, it's probably likely that Ricardo stays. Vettel is not retiring at the end of the season, and given that McLaren has locked down its drivers already, he's sort of shit out of luck. He won't want to go backwards. Not to Williams, anyway. Hulkenberg's linked with the seat over at Haas, so could a switch for Magnussen or even Grosjean be on the cards? Again, I don't know. This is all to stir up conversation, isn't it? Now, Ferrari is keeping its lineup. But if Vettel's 2020 is as bad as his 2019 is going, then I think 2020 will be the last we see of the four-time champion. And now, saving the worst for last. Williams! Russell will stay on as he's on a two- or three-year deal, I can't remember which, but it's a question of who his teammate is going to be. Robert Kubica has scored a point, albeit through circumstance, and Russell has been demolishing him all season. But it's because he's got a better car. Oh, shut up. Anyway, there have been rumours that PK Orlen, I hope I've got that correct, which is, you know, Kibitz's main backer, they are looking to buy him in at Haas or get him further up the grid, but that's as unlikely as me going into my bedroom later and finding Anna Kendrick on the bed. Ocon is slated as a potential partner for Russell because, fuck it, why not? And Bottas, as I mentioned, could be there if Mercedes bins him off. But... There's also Nicholas Latifi, who is Williams' current third driver. Now, he's doing pretty damn well in F2 at the minute, and he brings a lot of money. Then, there's the hilarious rumours that Alonso could be coming back. Yeah, you know when I said that these outlets just write any old shit to generate clicks? There it is! Now, he has a reputation of being a bit of a prickly character in the sport. Oh, sorry, no, not prickly character. Bit of a prick. Uh, but he insists that he has a loyalty to his teams, saying he gives everything for every team he drives for. The radio transmissions at McLaren say otherwise. But I'm not turning this into having a pop at Fernando Alonso because I can't be asked with the hate mail. Besides, it looks like the Dakar is more likely and Ferrari has shut down the rumours of a potential return, saying that both drivers in Vettel and Leclerc are locked in, despite the persistent Vettel retirement rumours. So what do you guys think? I've added my thoughts. Post yours in the comments. Are there any wild cards that I've missed? Are there any potential moves that I've missed? Which drivers would you love to see together in 2020? Now, like I say, leave them in the comments and let's get a discussion going. And if you want to carry on the discussion in real time, there'll be a link to my Discord in the description, as well as everything else you need to stalk me on social media or get in contact with me. Thanks, as always, go out to my patrons on Patreon. And if you wish to join them and think my work is deserving of it, then all the details are in the description with everything else. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, I'm off to sleep off the remainder of this jet lag, and I'll see you all again soon for some more larking about in the virtual world of motorsport, or stories and other stuff from the real world of motorsport. So until that next time, have a great day wherever you live in the world, and goodbye.